This is part two of section 2.3. We are asked to use the slope intercept formula to find the slope, the y intercept, and then graph. Okay? Now the formula, the slope intercept formula, is y equals mx plus b. b is our y intercept, m is our slope. If you compare this formula to here, you can see that your m is the coefficient of x, so it is 3, and b is 2. Okay? So what we're going to do is you're going to start off with the point that you know. I know I cross the y-axis at 2, so I'm going to put my 2 right there. Okay? Now my slope is 3. Remember one definition of slope was rise over run? Okay, now rise is your up-down movement, and run is your left-right movement. Okay, so you're going to be starting from the starting point, and your slope, that, that gives you the directions to another point. Now our slope is 3, which is the same as 3 over 1. So from my starting point, I'm going to rise 3, 1, 2, 3, run 1. So... Since this is positive, I go up. Since this is positive, I go right. So here is another point. Now, if I want to generate more points than this, I could keep going, but I'm off my grid. And so there's a useful trick here. Remember how I said it did not matter what order you, you, used, the, um, you used this formula in, which point you used first? And we can do that again. Remember it changed the sign on both of them? This is the same as negative 3 over negative 1, numerically, right? So I can completely reverse my steps. If I'm too near the edge of a grid and I can't go as many points as I want to one direction, I can go backwards. So from this point, I can back up and go negative 3, negative 1. And I can keep doing this to generate as many points on that line as I wish. Okay? And so your line looks exactly like this. Okay, so let's try this one. y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 3. Okay, my slope is negative 2 fifths. My b, my y-intercept, is 3. Okay. Now, the negative here is written off to the side. I want to remind you that this is negative 2 fifths, which is numerically the same as negative 2 over 5, which is numerically the same as 2 over negative 5. So when you have a negative fraction, the negative can be in the top or in the bottom, just not both, because if it's both, then you end up with a positive number. Okay? So let's start off. We're given the fact that we cross our y-axis at 3. So this is our starting point right here. Now I'm going to follow these directions first. My rise is negative 2, so I go down 2, and I run positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which pits that point right there. Okay, now let's use this one. From this starting point, I'm going to rise positive 2 and run negative 5, which puts me over in this corner. Okay, so connect these points. You should have a straight line and you have your graph. Okay, one thing I want to point out here because it's pretty useful information because I know you guys will eventually start using graphing calculators if you aren't already. One of the things I want you to completely understand first of all is that graphs have meaning and it's not just being picky teacher, making sure you graph everything perfectly. It's not artists. You're not artists. You're just trying to get meaning from this. This represents every single possible answer combination to this um, equation right here. So our graphs actually do have meaning. Um, but something we can tell just from looking at our slope, and you notice when we have it in this form, we can easily glance and see what our slope is. If your slope is positive, then your graph goes up. 
when you're looking at it from left to right. Now, how quickly it goes up depends on the numerical value. The larger your number, the, the faster it goes up. If it's a relatively small positive number, it's going to be not going up so fast, but it will still be going up when you look at it from left to right. Whereas if you have a negative slope, then your graph is going to be going down when you look at it from left to right. Again, how quickly it goes down depends on the numerical value. If your slope is a really big number, a really big negative number, like negative 100, it's going to be going down really quickly. If it's uh, like negative 0.25, it's not going to be going down so quickly, but it will still be going down. That's something that is easy to look at when you're entering something into a graphing calculator, and it is something that's easy to quickly check. Leaving off a negative is one of the easiest mistakes we ever make. Okay, so we have some special cases. The formula for a horizontal line is y equals b. b is still your y-intercept. Okay, now let me just rewrite this in one little form. y is equal to 0x plus b. This is numerically the same as this because we're multiplying x by 0, which is just 0. Adding 0 to b is still just b. But look right here. This would say our slope is 0. Horizontal lines always have a slope that is equal to 0. These go together absolutely if your slope is 0. Think about it. If your slope is 0, is it a positive number? No, so it's not going up. Is it a negative number? No, so it's not going down. It is completely flat. The formula for a vertical line is x equals a, and a is our x-intercept. Okay? There is no way for us to rewrite this in this form. Because to be in slope, um, to point the, in order to be in slope intercept form, we have to be able to solve for y. And we don't have a y, so we can't do that. In this case, our slope is undefined. So when might that happen? Remember, a fraction or a division is undefined if our denominator is 0. So if our x values happen to be the same, when we do the subtraction, we get 0 in the denominator. And that means we're going to have a vertical line. OK. And then what we have is general form of a line. If you took Math 330, Intermediate Algebra, at Lee College, you learned what we called standard form of a line. This is different, but similar. Okay, For general form, we want to have a 0 on this side and have ax plus by equal to c equal to 0. So we want everything on this side. We want our x first, then our y, and then our constant. Now we have a couple of other little requirements. They don't want you to have fractions in this. So if any of these three numbers happens to be a fraction, then we're going to kill the fraction by multiplying by the common denominator. They do want it in this order, and they want our first number to be positive. So if a happens to be a negative number, all we have to do is to multiply everything by a negative 1, and we have it in the right form. Okay, so let's use this a little bit. We want to graph y equal to 4. This says my y-intercept is 4, which is right up there. And y equal to is a horizontal line. Now, if you have trouble remembering which of these is which, just remember that this variable tells you what kind of intercept you have. And then ask yourself, what kind of line must have a y-intercept? Well, if I have a vertical line, I don't have to cross the y-axis. But if I have a horizontal line, there is no way for me to do it without crossing the y-axis. This will be a horizontal line through 4. And I'm going to do this in a different color, so maybe it will show up a little bit better. But basically, it's going to be that line right there. Okay. Now let's do x equal to negative 2. 
So my x-intercept is negative 2. On the x-axis, negative 2 is right here. Okay, I have to cross the x-axis. Horizontal lines do not have to cross the x-axis. This one didn't. Vertical lines absolutely must cross the x-axis somewhere. So this is the line we are looking for.